this game, you know, it's clear that zoners aren't, like, they're not true zoners. They're like, they have good neutral game, but then in between the neutral, they have, like, strong, strong zoning. It's not necessarily like they do, like, a good example is, like, pre-patch Johnny, right? Pre-patch Johnny with the force balls is, what, nine frame force balls, right? With instant recovery, too, by the way. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know, like, for me, it just it just seems like the zoning is just, like, the icing on the cake. Like, everyone, because this is the problem that I have on YouTube all the time. It just, to me, it seems like every single time, like, someone's complaining about zoning, it's always the character is just better up close. It's not necessarily the zoning is strong. Like, a good example is, like, I was looking at, I was looking at Noob the other day, right? And I was looking at some of his moves, and the the beauty about Noob is that Noob has a meterless launcher. I I never even I I've heard about it, but it wasn't until I went into the lab and I looked at him that I realized that he had a meterless launcher. It's two one two. It's meterless. You just oh, input yeah. it. It's safe. Everything. And when you do the full combo, you do about I think two hundred without amped, and then two hundred ninety, like almost three hundred damage with the seeing double variation. So like if you do a shadow slide um, enhanced, it leaves them about mid screen, uh, a little co closer to full screen actually. And you're, you do like 299 damage, like almost 30%. And what I kind of realized was that the reason why noob does so well, isn't because like I can equip spirit ball, right? The, the quick projectile and I can equip sickle, sickle toss where he, his, it's basically like Scarlet's Blood Tentacle, but um, you can direct it, and it's a it's not as safe. But you there's a mind game behind it because you can amp it. So if your opponent tries to move too early, the amp will knock them down, and you get a full combo for it. So what I came to realize was that the reason why Noob isn't good is not necessarily because he does a lot of damage. Or no, sorry, let me rephrase. The reason why Noob isn't good. The reason why Noob is good isn't because he zones you well. It's good because he zones you well, but when you get in his face, he gets 300 damage with a meterless launcher. Like, that's why he's good. It's not It's not because his zoning is strong. Because if his zoning was strong and he was shit up close, like, almost every top tier character would just straight up murder this character. But the reason this character is good is because he has footsie tools, he's very good up close, and he's he's good at zoning. You know? He has like arguably the best footsies in the game. Uh if you have the right moves equipped, he has the uh the second highest damage in the game. Um but I would say he's not even, he's not really a zoner, he's a space control character. He doesn't really have a full screen game. Uh the the sickle move that you're talking about where he does the overhead, that yeah. move is uh that's trash. You can you can equip um there's another move that's not the shadow slide. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's a low. But it basically accomplishes the same thing that amplified shadow slide does. Is it makes all your unsafe buttons safe when you just end a string with it, um, and it doesn't cost meter. So you can spend your meter on combos uh, rather than spending it on safety, which is really important for noob. Uh, but you know, you give up a little bit of screen pressure. Either okay. way, like. Noob has anti-zoning tools, right? Like the teleport. If you see a slow move starting to come out, or if like, like you're full used screen. to, yeah, yeah. If you're used to um, looking for like a Cetrion Boulder or like Shang Tsung's, cor well, I guess Corpse Drop beats the the teleport because you have to go up. Yeah, but like thing things like that, you can teleport and punish them. Um, but Noob doesn't have a strong full screen full screen game other than something like that, which is. For the slower moves, it's reaction, but for, like, uh, Scarlet's Blood Tentacle, uh, you have to make a read on it. Oh, okay. Okay. So you would say, you would say it's actually, he's, he's actually not as strong full screen, then? You would say it's I uh, know, I don't, I don't think so, but he is really good at, like, <laughs> jumping space distance, control. plus yeah. and minus, yeah, like, space control. half of that. Well, I've, I've noticed that myself, I mean, I was... Uh, you know, playing with uh, low tier or not low tier hero. I was playing with uh, Doctor Sloth, and I noticed that it's just like <sighs> Johnny. Almost, it seems like Johnny might struggle from the same problem Katana struggles with when it came to Noob, because 
from what I saw, Johnny can't use forward three on Noob because if you do if you do an uh, an enhanced slide and you down one immediately, it just checks the forward three. So he has to guess: should I jump here or should I wait for him to press a button and then try to whiff punish? Because what ends up happening is um, he'll he'll jump right he'll jump expecting the down one but then you could just wait and then do uh his upward shadow or his down four and get a full combo so it's just yeah. to me the space control with noob the, the little deception that slide gives you really hurts a lot of characters that can't low crush because now they have to guess are you going to press a button afterward or are you just going to wait for them to do something and then punish them so i can see where noob definitely dominates the space i guess um, sickle toss is kind of more of an anti-zoning tool. I would, I would say, what about his spirit ball though? I mean, his spirit ball is probably pretty strong. You wouldn't say that that's, that's a good zoning tool. It's really fast. Um, and it does uh 90 damage too, by the way. That's crazy. That does it's more a, damage than, than, uh, Melina's Psy, her double it's Psy. It's a really, it's a really damaging projectile. Yeah. Um, I... I don't really play noob that much, but like my understanding is that you equip a uh, spirit ball for like certain matchups where you just want that extra thing. Also, um, you can end a combo uh, standing, right? With it, it's back back one one plus three into spirit ball. It leaves them standing. I don't know what the hit advantage on spirit ball is, but uh, anyway, it's still your turn after that. And noob's forward two is ten frames that reaches. Like, oh yeah yeah it, yeah it's, it's really strong yeah I mean, same thing his back but... three his back three is the same way well you could just with punish with it that's the that's the other thing it's just there's just so much opportunity that he has there it, yeah. i think I his biggest flaw punishing... is his mids but i mean if you play if you play noob right i mean like if you're point blank he does have a nine frame mid that you can cancel now, we're not talking slide. combat league here. We're talking players that actually have a brain. <laughs> yeah, you can um you can check somebody with back one enough that uh oh, I think back one is his mid. You can check somebody with his mid enough that they start respecting it, so you can get away with taking your turn back with high attacks. Yeah, yeah, it's the same with Sonya. Basically, you have to condition them to stop pressing. And then eventually they'll respect your highs and then you can enforce your mix-up. I think what happens is, at least with me, is that I can't get people... Like, dude, I'm telling you right now, like, when I play Melina, when I play Melina, right, people will try to jump over my throw. And I'm like, dude, like, you know you're risking, like, 300 damage, right? But it's because I can't... Me as a player, and this is kind of something I struggle with as a player myself is just conditioning people to fucking respect my shit because you know what i've noticed is that when i can't get people to condition like when i can't condition someone it's usually a it's a pattern issue that i'm implementing myself right like it's like you know maybe i'm going for throws too much maybe i need to continue going for the back one uh, especially with melina because melina is just a straight She's a ri she's a very risky character, but my thing is that if you can get your opponent to be conditioned by her, then that's when Melina shines because being able to loop them with stabby sky, I just think that's real. I think that's where Melina's at, honestly. I th I think it's very risky because you are gonna get down to crushing. It's gonna happen. It's like playing when Foxy plays, right? He he understands this because like I even asked him. I remember asking him on stream one day. Don't you aren't you afraid of down two crushing blow since you throw a lot since that's your main you know your main meta game and he was like yeah but they can only do it once that's straight up what he told me he's like yeah but they I mean you can only get down two crushing blow at once so get down two crushing blow at once and then keep enforcing your 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 throw mind game and I think that's where I personally think I'm not a pro player I'm just saying from what I've experienced I think that's personally where Molina shines. But we'll see. I mean, it just really depends on, you know, how the metagame will shape. I mean, it's only been, a f what, a few weeks? That yeah, Melina's but there's out. about to be um, a pro competition. I think they do EU this weekend, so in like three days, and then NA is the week afterwards. 
And uh, for NA specifically, I know Samij has been playing a whole lot of Molina. Okay. So, okay. Uh, well, at least I'm I'm confident that um, in some of the tournaments you'll get to see like some of the like top tier players play Molina and see how they use it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of. I mean, I guess that's what it really comes down to, right? Like, I can give no all shade, this theory. No shade thrown at the tier two players who are doing all the content creators tournaments right now either like they're all really good players too but like we're talking like scar yeah and top and top Dragon. of the top yeah. yeah top of the top spend countless of hours of getting better at this game and they're clear you know some of them are clearly prodigies so yeah i mean my what's kind of weird to me about samij though is i'm surprised he's playing molina i just feel like molina's so risky in this game to me, it just seems like not a Samij thing. I mean, I don't know too much about Samij. I'm not throwing shade at Samij at all. I'm just saying that from what I've seen, Samij doesn't, uh, his kind of play style doesn't seem very risky. Yeah, it's super safe. It's not like I mean, he biohazard. Plays, he plays Cassie, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's why I'm a little confused. Like, I actually thought he was going to go back to Katana because Katana has, now she has, because I know Samij likes air game. If you watch any of the characters he used to play, they they generally have a, a decent air game, especially with like Catwoman and Catwoman and her jump too. So I was a little surprised that Samij didn't go back and pick up Katana because I per a lot of people are saying Katana's worse because she doesn't have razors, so she doesn't have this mind game and she has to deal with breakaway now. But I mean, I just think they have I ha I don't think enough people have tapped into Katana's potential. I think like no one has talked about her bionic bounce. The only one that I know of that that does the katana bionic bounce is uh, uh, what's his name, Deoxys. That's it. That's he's the only person I've seen who has consistently um, used that version of katana. And there's other versions. Like there's the Molina stance where you can enforce plus frames and know it is not a gimmick. If they delay wake up, they still get hit by the psi. So. There's that mind game where you actually get to use Oki unless they roll. Um, there's the low fan mind game where you zone them out and you have the teleport for anti-zoning. I just, I personally think Katana got better, but I could see why people just think that Razors was like what made the character. Because to be honest, a lot of what makes Katana good is her special moves. Her normals are very bad. Like, you have to have, you have to equip the right special moves, or Katana will not shine. Like, her dial of combos, they're just ridiculous. Like, they're all, like, all of her frames are, are horrible. So, I'm a little surprised that Samiz didn't go back to Katana. But I guess Katana's bottom tier now. That's a, that's what I'm hearing from most, I, I was watching Rio's podcast yesterday um, on Twitch, and he was saying the same thing, that, well, he wasn't saying that, but Dave was saying that, the katana is not she's not as high as they're not necessarily saying the the character is bad they're just saying that compared to all the other characters you can play like i could see lu kang being just like if you're a katana player just picking up lu kang instead because lu kang is just better he just does what katana does but better he might not whiff punish as well but you can still get that zoning and that pressure that you get from playing katana you'll just miss out on the advancing mid pretty much and some of the aerial game i guess but anyway um that's all i have to say about katana i, I didn't know if you had any input on it or what you think about it personally um as a cetrion player <laughs> katana can be rough because she can equip the teleport kick and outzone you with her regular projectiles uh, with giant hitboxes that Cetrion cannot jump over. Um, and her fans are also faster than anything Cetrion can throw at you. So I have to play a rushdown matchup against Katana, but Katana has so many things to like basically have better footsies because her whiff punishes are really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Her down three is low profiles, some mids, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like she, uh, I think she's still low profiles Garrus, um, if I remember correctly. So, so that I mean, that's basically like what I think about Katana. It's it's not a great matchup, even though you'd say Cetrion's top tier and Katana is bottom three. It sounds like because we would probably say that Scarlet and Shao Kahn are both worse. Yeah. Oh, you would say Katana's bottom three. Uh, well. 
I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I don't know because like not enough experience on it yet, right? Yeah, but yeah. I would say Shao Kahn and Scarlet are both. Oh, worse. easily, easily. I, I think I think this patch. Uh, I, I like how Dave put it. He he the the patch it buffed like the really strong characters, and now the characters that even though they got buffs. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you look at Scarlet and Shao Kahn. I can't really speak for Shao Kahn, but I can speak for Scarlet as someone who really, really loves Scarlet. Scarlet's one of my favorite characters. And I can say that she didn't... I mean, the fact that she got that... Was that with the blood clot? The fact that she got that nerfed, and then she... her. I mean, you could do, like, slow blood, blood ball and teleport to kind of make her strings safe. They're kind of pseudo safe. You, you know, if your opponent still makes the right guess, they can punish you. But you can enforce mind games. But let's face it, like Gar all Garrus has to do, it, and I always relate it to Garrus because all he has to do is do one sand trap, get in, <clears throat> and then enforces four two one two mind games. And Scarlet can't really do anything. Like that's my big issue with this game is this, it just seems like some characters, like what are they supposed to be doing? Like they can't zone you, they can't play a good footsie game. They their pressure is shit. So, like, what are they... They're just an inferior version of another character. Like, that's that's what it kind of seems like to me. It seems like some characters, they're kind of lost in this game. They just seem like they they don't know... You don't know what you should be doing. Like, a good example I always like to use is... Katana is a little bit more beneficial in this sense. Um, but Katana versus Garrus, it just makes me wonder, like... When am I... I'm supposed to just toss fans in the air until he comes to me, maybe? I don't know. Because eventually, if he gets a sand trap, he's in my face, and he's better up close. And he's even better in the mid-range. So, like, as as a Katana player, like, what am I supposed to be doing? You know? And that's kind of where... That's why it's I like, wanted to talk to you about Cetrion. But yeah, continue. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I struggle against, like, good Gearus players, but, like... To me, I think he's one of the characters if you have an inferior match. Like, if you're not playing, like, a really good pressure character like Jackie or Fu Kang, basically, to compete with Gyrus up close. I think you just have to make reads. Reads on uh, flawless blocks or uh, a couple of the other ways that you can Throws. make reads against Gyrus. Yeah, his mid his mid command grab. Read, reading forward to mid, stand one, yeah. mid, stuff like uh, that. It's just, it's reads. And if you guess right, you can win. And if you guess wrong, then you take a lot of damage <laughs> yeah yeah well i've heard i've heard people say and i can't think of anyone off the top of my head nor would i want to but i've heard people say sometimes you just want to do a bunch of damage against garrus and then leave it at that like play but the thing is the problem with that is garrus can play a keep away game so if you're playing someone like baraka and you just want to do 50 percent you know 40 50 percent you can't even do that because he's just going to zone you out the whole time so it's yeah, like you're it's, in this weird position. Since um, Ultimate came out, uh, when I would fight Gyrus, which is kind of rare actually, uh, they seem to always like equipping the um, the pillar, like his uh, new era. Oh yeah, zoning, yeah. zoning move. So Let's he would have um, the command grab, which is just the absence of choke slam, right? Yeah. Uh, the the pillar. Um, some of them used advanced sand trap, which makes sense because if you see a boulder coming, you can you don't have to worry about getting hit by it. You can sand trap it. Uh, oh, okay. but like th things like that. But um, I'd say I can still I can still fight him. He's just Cetrion can whiff punish him though, so that's like that's really helpful. Um, so I imagine that means that Katana can too, even though Cetrion's whiff punish is a nine frame high and Katana's is. How 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 slow is back? I think it's one or back two. It's either back seventeen. Two. I think it's like seventeen frames or something like that. Seventeen or eighteen. It's really yeah, it's high. But the the trick is you 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 want to you want to get your opponent poking or you want to get your opponent like moving back and then you punish with the back two. Like a good example is when you play Sub Zero. Sub Zeros like to do that too. Was it or three three two and then back up or three back up and then with punish you or with forward two or back one? Um, yeah. You want when they start doing that nonsense, you want to read it and then just do a back two. You don't want to dash up and punish them. You just want to do a back two and you get a full combo like thirty percent or higher. 
for that. So that's kind of more what it's used for. It's not, it's, it's usually used for spacing. It's not really used to straight up, I guess, with punish on reaction. I don't know. Like it's more of like used more of a read, right? Like if, if, if Jade does a down four and you're reading the down four, you wait for her to do the down four, you back up slightly and then you do it back two. That's kind of more what that, that move is used for. It's not used for someone just does a move and then you instantly punish it, right? That I would say that's more of like dash up one, two or something like that. I've caught a lot of Luke Kangs that way. They'll do, uh, was it one, two, is it one, one, two, three? Yep. Yeah. So they'll do one, two, three on wake up and I'll move up, I'll move back slightly. And as long as they don't hit me with the kick, I can punish with one, two. But you could forget about back two in that situation. Back two is just too slow. Like there's, I've tried it so many times. You just get blown up. Like two, yeah, I get, two quick I get hit buttons. by that string so much, dude. <laughs> oh, the one. Yeah, it's usually the kick that gets you. It's usually yeah. the kick because the I kick is I very hard up to punish. Enough and they, then it reaches like so much farther than you expect. You're like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. And the the hitbox of the kick too is the issue. I've noticed is you have to time it perfectly. If you don't, then the kick will just, it'll, it'll punish you every time basically. But I don't think they can hit confirm the kick though. I think, cause I think it's only three buttons. So they'd have to make a hard read to hit confirm just the kick. Yeah. But, well, you know, or if they, if they saw you press something, um, then you know, it's going to hit and you'll do that. I need yeah. to get better at that myself. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Anyway, anyway, Cetrion, Cetrion. Yeah, Cetrion. Yeah, we <laughs> we kind of went on a tangent. Hey, it was it was a good tangent though. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk to you today about a few things about Cetrion. Just kind of what you think about Cetrion. I'm gonna ask a bunch of players about just their characters and what they think about the the meta game and MK11 and how UMK11 has um has served them so far. I mean, we're we're only what a few weeks in. We're not even a month in, are we? Are we a month no, it in? came out on the 17th. Yeah, so we're not even a month in. So, I mean, this is clearly going to change over time. But I just think right now is a kind of a small s settling ground. This is kind of like the first one. We were, we were in the honeymoon phase. Now we're kind of in the, you, you know, okay, well, this is clearly a bad matchup. Or this feels like a bad matchup. Not necessarily this is a bad matchup, but... Um, so I just kind of want to talk to you today a little bit about Cetrion, but what makes you like Cetrion though? Like what kind of, even before UMK3, like what, what may, or is it UMK? Yeah. UMK11, sorry. Um, what makes you like Cetrion? Like what made you gravitate towards her over all the other top tiers? Like what would I... you say? First started Cetrion after uh, the grand finals of CEO 2019, which was Sonic Fox in losers versus Dragon in winners. Okay. Uh, but after watching that whole tournament, and this is this is back before Gears' 212 was nerfed. It was like, uh, I forget which month it was, but it was like almost a year and a half ago, I feel like. Um, uh, and he did well enough to make me like pay attention to the character now granted i wasn't very good at the game back then um but when i started picking her up i couldn't use her very well but i found that her combos with uh spring cleaning with the geyser i found her combos very satisfying to pull off um and and the fact that you could uh jail a boulder into a not really a full bnb combo but a teleport combo for uh like 200 damage if they didn't block after the boulder um oh, okay so that's just a start and then um afterwards i just kind of kept paying attention to um i guess mostly dragon and when i decided to like commit to cetrion it was still spring cleaning um i did try born again when they released the third, the third variations but uh i just didn't see how strong the tornado move was. Um, Until uh, I'll get into that in just a second. I didn't uh, respect the power of tornado because I was still like into the combo damage, and also um, her geyser has an advantage to to it. Is that um, which is that the geyser is actually faster than her other combo moves, so you can actually punish more things. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, that geyser can punish that none of her other moves can is uh, scorpion spear from any distance except for absolute absolute full screen uh, you can 
punish his spear with that teleport combo I was talking about from full, uh, um, no matter what, as long as you have the guys are equipped. Another move that comes to mind is Raiden's uh, Lightning Strike. It's a reversal punish into a combo every single time. Okay. Um, okay. So those are things I didn't actually gravitate towards uh, the tornado until uh, my MMR, like I started winning a bunch of games and my MMR got boosted. So I started playing against stronger players. When people start flawless blocking your rock wall and punishing you, um, that is the move that is used for safety for Cetrion sp spring cleaning. But if somebody knows, if you're fighting somebody good enough to punish it, then it's no longer safe. It doesn't do the thing because unamplified it's minus 20. Amplified it's minus 13 with no pushback. It is an unsafe move against a good player. MMR? Uh, your invisible matchmaker rating. Uh, oh, okay, th okay. Yeah, like, as you win more and more, it basically, the game sees you as a better player, so it tries to match you against better oh, players. Oh, so that's why I lose a lot. <laughs> this, this isn't as true on PC, because as you know, our community is small. very... Yeah. Yes, it's very small. Um, but this is absolutely true on um, the consoles. Okay. Yeah, and that also, I think, uh, I remember Rio talking about this, I think that's also why there's actually two different matchmaking systems. So one is the combat league matchmaking that doesn't really mean anything. You know, you just yep. play enough and eventually you can get the demigod. I think it gets harder when you get the god because I've never been able to get the god no matter how much I play. But um, there is um well in UMK11 when you, remember when you had to fight those three scorpion AIs? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so one of the tutorial screens that popped up before that is they actually discussed your your hidden matchmaker rating. They said, yes, we base it on... So the thing that Rios was talking about is that exact tutorial. Oh, I just straight up ignored up. it. <laughs> uh, well, that's that yeah, That was explained in, in the okay. update. Okay, okay. I actually didn't know about that, so that's nice to know. Um, well, I did. I knew about it before, but I, I didn't know that they told you through the little Scorpio. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no longer hearsay. It's confirmed by NRS. Okay. I mean, that's good. I think, I think that's better because what that's taught me... It's taught me a few things, um, just kind of going on a quick tangent here, but it's taught me that I need to learn the, the more important mechanics like flawless blocking. Um, what else has it taught me? Spacing. It's taught me to not press when I get hit. I mean, I still do it every once in a while, but I can definitely say that that is something that it has taught me. It's taught me that you can't just play combat league. Uh, the combat league way, I guess, is what I would call it, where... You just do whatever the hell you want and see if it works. Uh, that's definitely something that the matchmaking has taught me over time because trying to squirm out of pressure, it only works when you're playing kind of lower tier characters or lower tier uh, players. But um, yeah, so yeah, I, t I totally get that. That makes that all makes you, a lot what, of sense. You mean like wake up, jump three times or four times in a row? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's the new tech, by the way. I don't know if you've seen that. It's either up three or jump. That's that's the new because they they're reading you're gonna jump on them, so they do a, they'll jump to to counter your jump, and then they'll up three when you try to pressure them. But the th the way to counter that is you literally just stand there, you just stand from a safe distance where they can't touch you. So if they do an up three, you can whiff punish, and if they jump, they'll do a jump normal. You wait for them to land, and then you punish them. I mean, that's a theory thing, right? Every single time I do it, I somehow get hit or I'm too impatient or whatever. But that's that's generally how you would deal with that kind of nonsense of the wake-up game. Cetrion's Amplified Rock Wall is really good against all wake-ups. Um, if you space it right and you do the far Rock Wall Amplified, uh, it'll catch forward rolls with the second hit. It'll catch wake-up buttons with the first hit and then knock them down with the second. Um, and... I haven't done it too much since the new since the new wake up timings, but I'm confident since uh, the rock wall initially has like 17 active frames that it'll catch wake up jumps too. Oh, okay, okay. Here, give me give me just one moment. I, I, someone's making some noise. Oh, someone's making some noise in the background. I'll be right back. Yep. Water time. Yeah, that actually kind of reminds me of um, that reminds me of Katana's uh, Fan NATO. 
really. If you media fan NATO or a fan toss, generally people can't. They have to respect it because you're not there. That's what I always use. I always say that you're you're not there. If you're not there when they wake up, they can't really do anything to hurt you. I mean, they can try to do wake up buttons maybe, but that generally, I don't know. That's just very to me. That's really risky. I mean, your your opponent basically respects all of your wake up options at that point. Because I'm not saying. And again, I think I think Tom Brady he goes into a lot of good detail about this, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't pressure your opponent ever. You should always shimmy them. But what I'm saying is, I think that a lot of the times we don't want to take those risks because we're afraid of getting comboed. But you have to make your opponent respect something because if you don't, that's when they start doing things like wake up jump, wake up buttons because what they realize is that, oh, this guy's afraid to pressure me no matter what. So you have to kind of enforce that well, I'm, I'm willing to pressure you even if you do combo me or you do take your turn back, you know? I think that happens a lot. That's, that's part of the fighting game mentality, right? Conditioning. Again, not talking about combat league because at some point you're fighting somebody in combat league and you have to just like make the decision, all right, you cannot condition the unconditionable. I'm going to take a different approach. <laughs> this yeah. dude is not respecting anything ever, so I'm going <laughs> to use that to my advantage rather than trying to use... Uh, rather than assume that I'm playing against somebody who like is making logical decisions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that again, that's happened to me a few... Like, with Melina, I've noticed that especially because Melina's Oki game is super strong. Like, I'm just going to... I'm going to keep saying that. Like, Melina's Oki game, Oki game is like the strongest I've ever seen a, a character have Oki game that I've played. I know I know there's clearly better better ones, excuse me, in the tier list, but from what I've seen with with me playing Melina, it's very, well, very Melina strong. can do it mid screen. Some other characters have like really, really good pressure in the corner, but it dwindles significantly if they're mid screen. Melina can do everything anywhere on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Well I was talking about specifically her Oki her Oki game. I she is strong pretty pretty well everywhere. I mean I would argue that I think there are some matchups where you do have to use low side because I was playing against Sloth's uh Johnny Cage and he had the the arced force ball. And when he was doing the arc force ball, I couldn't zone him. I had to read when he was gonna throw an arced force ball and then trade with the side because what was happening was he would just read me do a side toss and then he would duck it and then throw an arc force ball and then i would get i would have to block the arc force ball but he wouldn't have to block the side toss so i think there are going to be some variations that might need the low side sorry i apologize uh, i was gonna say i've fought sloth like a number of times the past couple of weeks oh um, you have yeah I, I seem i seem to end up always beating him uh but I think that's that's not because of like the matchup or anything. That's because I pick up on his patterns as a player. Like, like on the on the first match, he staggers forward three a lot, right? So yeah, once yeah. I started once I started learning that, I was like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, <laughs> I see what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, Sloth and Microduck. I, we're, we're kind of in the same. We're kind of in the same, I guess, uh, skill level. So I actually like playing him because I kind of learn how to tech throws and how to deal with pressure and things of that sort and, and uh, Johnny's down for Johnny's down for hurts a lot of a lot of buttons so him getting me to respect a lot of that stuff has has really helped me as a player um and he I know he's constantly trying to improve himself too so I think us being able to play together it just helps us both learn very well so, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know, kind of going back to Melina really quick, like, I, I just, I don't know if she's going to dominate the mid screen as well, the full, or the full screen as well. I think the big issue she has is her teleport, but actually... We need to steer clear of this, because we were totally supposed to be talking to you about your character. I don't know how we got back to uh, neutral and okay and all that stuff, but... Um, I get it. You just really like Molina. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Molina stan. I mean, a lot of people think might think I am, but I, I play whoever I like. I mean, I was playing Noob yesterday. I just, like I said, I play whoever I like playing. Um, that's how it's always been for me. I just, my mascot happens to be Katana because that was the first character I picked up in MK11, so... 
Um, so where were we? So we were talking about why you like your character the most. So what annoys you the most about this game in relation to your character? Like what 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 do you struggle with the most when you play Cetrion? Um I seem to have the hardest problem right now. This is probably just my own gameplay and I'm I'm sure that it's not a weakness of the character. Um I struggle to play my game against characters that have like longer range normals than Cetrion. Um so like a lot of times uh, Cetrion is extremely good at whiff punishing and then I try to do that but I'm I'm sure that it's my mistake in spacing when I try to like whiff punish characters like Joker who have like incredible range on their buttons um okay okay and I also struggle getting out of I think specifically like Jax's pressure up close cuz like Say what you want, dude. I think that Jax has arguably the best mix-ups up close, In depending game. on what moves he brings. Uh, especially if he brings that uh, that variation three move. I can't remember what it's called, but it's that string that's two two one one two two. Is it two two grab or two two two? I don't know. That long string that starts with a high and it has an overhead or it has a high, but he can cancel it any time into a a grab. You know? oh, okay. Is it is it like the the Rambo strings or the Molina strings where you can and you can add more, or you can no, add throws to no, it? No, it's a it's a separate string all itself. Then the input is literally two two one one two two. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it can end with a high attack that's plus four, and your plus four or Jax is plus four against you at point blank range, which is rough. Or he can end it with an overhead that does have a flawless block gap. Oh, okay. Okay. Or at any point during those six or seven hits, <laughs> he can cancel it into any special move. Okay. So what I mean, what would you say? Would you would you try to keep Jax out in that situation? Maybe since you're such your always own, always own zone Jax, dude. He's too. It's too rough to deal with his his pressure up close. Okay. But uh, back to like the main thing is uh, the long range normal characters. Uh, Joker. In fact, uh, Cetrion mirror matches my. Uh, like backdash and trying to whiff punish, I will just end up getting hit by the longer range normals. Um, you asked me what annoyed me, though. I'd say that that doesn't really annoy me. That's just that's me playing weak. Um, the the um, the jumps in this game are are annoying. Jump, to me. <laughs> <laughs> jump in three specifically, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some characters jump. Katana's jump in too, dude. Yeah, jump. Like in some too, yeah. some jump in. Jackie's jumping too, or. Whatever Jackie's jumping button is, Jackie's is insane because of the way that her body leans. You like the hitbox is completely out front and below her, and anywhere that you're going to hit her is like safe. It's like safe from getting hit. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, it's kind of funny. I actually anti air to ju uh, katana jump in too, but I honestly those those jump ins when you anti air them, they're just so predictable. Your your opponent is probably already losing anyway. That's what I've noticed. It's usually the care. It's usually when you're playing against an opponent that's very unpredictable, their jump ins become magically harder to anti air. And what I mean by that is like, even in when you read the jump in, for some reason, like you're just not able to anti air consistently against the player. That's what I've noticed. Because it's generally like the like the only time I really get good anti airs is if the dude is just like like he's so readable. Like he's clearly pattern or making a pattern right but th and that, that's kind of the big issue that i have is like it seems like they're not as reactable as you would like them to be you know what i mean like i think most games you have like more you have a better chance of reacting to the jump ins more consistently um but in this game it's just like you have to like you have to be on point if you are not on point on the jump in you're not getting that anti air. Like it's just not happening. And I, I don't think that's fair personally. I, I think that they definitely need to do something about how hard it is to anti air jump ins. Plus yeah, so certain jump ins are, are too rough. And that is coming from me who plays a character who I would say has the best anti air standing buttons. Well, and even like down three. Yeah, it has like no hitbox, right? The, the stand one. 
has no hurt box, right? Or hurt box, yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Um, no, you can stand back, and even if uh, even if you want to play it safer still, you can do forward one from even farther away and anti-air into a restand combo. Again, um, Cetrion's combo that involved the tendrils uh, ends with a rock wall that the tendrils restand, and then you end with a rock wall that leaves them standing at just under jumping distance uh, with Cetrion having 15 frames of hit advantage. Which is enough time for a dash up and a fast button, dash up throw, or her forward two, which is a 14 frame mid. Okay. Advancing mid. Yeah. So it's, I mean, but the risk. The character with the best anti air buttons in the game still struggles against some of these jump punches. Like, if you're going to have. I understand having, like, a character with a really extremely good jump punch, that's fine. Uh, but, like, if jump-ins are universally so incredibly hard to deal with, then it takes away like some uniqueness from the characters. It just makes the game annoying. And all the jump punches are plus, like, incredibly plus on block. Yeah, well the, the other issue that I have just kind of piggybacking off what you said, the other issue I have is that the, it kills the neutral. Like, when you can't deal with anti- when your anti-airs aren't consistent and your jump ins are an issue, and they're pl they're really plus. Like even the jump kicks are plus. Like I'm able to, I've been doing this with Melina. I'll do a jump and kick because the kick is more reliable to hit a crouching opponent. And I'll just go into back one. Someone will press. I'll get a full combo. If they don't press, then I'll be at minus six. And then, I, or I could do a jump kick into her throw, her unteckable stabby scotch. So it's like, yeah. it's it's just not fair for your opponent. Your opponent has to read exactly when to um when to anti-air that jump kick it's this is ridiculous so i yeah. i totally like, get it that. seems like it seems like even when you feel like your spacing was good and your timing on your button was good you feel like all of that was in your favor and you still get kicked <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. bro like uh that's uh, that's like uh the the main thing that's kind of they combo too that's i mean melina's jump kick even if it hits you right like it would be okay if it'd be like okay i got hit now i got my wake up options right but like yeah, you some can, you can pick up the combos yeah that's with forward one ball roll or with cabal's nomad dash or with katana i mean katana doesn't get a full combo but she gets the square wave so Cetri it's like cetrion can uh pick it up with forward one and then restand you with tornado Forward it's, one three tornado after yeah, a jump free, kick works. Free pressure. Free yeah, it works almost everywhere. Granted, the tornado is only plus three on hit. It leaves them right next to you. So a lot of people um, will just mash. They'll try to mash their seven frame low attack out of out of plus three. But let's be honest, dude, it's plus three. Such yeah. has an eight frame down one. Um, if you try to down one then and they block it, you give up your turn. If you go for a high attack to enforce your pressure, they can mash out of it. If you go for your mid, it's too slow and they can mash out of it. Yeah, that's... Um, so I'm still working. That's like a... I think you just have to read your opponent in that situation. Yeah, when they're minus three. Minus three is an illusion, apparently. <laughs> when you're point blank. Yeah, it's 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 all. I mean, I I would say the the ultimate solution is flawless blocking, but it's, I mean, come on, like that's clearly. Actually, that's oh. that's actually one of the questions I was going to ask you. Are your you kind of already answered it for me? Are your anti airs reliable, or do you rely on gimmicks? And I consider flawless blocking a jump in a gimmick. I mean, that's pretty much what it, it's it's not. It wasn't meant for that, per se, but. Uh, so well, I'm getting better at flawless blocking jump ins. Um, but what I will say is, the more I do it, the more I realize that Cetrion's up to whiffs. Um, basically, at least half of the time, if I flawless block up to a jump in, it whiffs, and then I just waste my meter. I mean, we're both standing there, and we're like, "Wow, that was really impressive that you flawless blocked that jump in." <laughs> it's a shame that your button whiffed. I'm what like, about yeah, flawless so, block up three? Yeah, it's just I. Again, I've only been flawless blocking jump ins for like a week or a week and a half now. Oh, um, okay. So I still serious. have some room for improvement in my own play. I'm thinking that with Cetrion, because her up two sucks so much, um, 
I'm just going to have to do Flawless Block up 3. Then at least it's my turn. It's 90 damage to hit that up 3, which is good. Uh, and it, I don't know how much hit advantage the, the up 3 has, but it's enough that it's indisputably my turn. Yeah, or you could do... Because uh, I think the last time we were talking about Flawless Blocking early jump-ins, you could just Flawless Block it at the height of the jump-in and then take your turn back with a mid or a down 1. Because that, that has the least amount of risk, because even if you mess up the flawless block, you'll just block the attack and you just block their pressure. Or yeah. if you flawless block and they go for a throw, you should have enough time to realize that they didn't kick you and try to take your turn back with a down one or something. But I was testing that, and I'm not sure on every character, but I was doing um, Jackie uh, with Shrapnel Blast. Uh, and then coming down with her jump, jump two, I guess, flawless block it, and the Jackie was still plus after a flawless block. Uh, it was only like plus two, right? Where normally it's like wow. plus ten or something. Okay. Yeah, after a flawless block, she was plus two. So you have to spend meter to like have your turn because you can say a lot of things about two frames of block advantage that don't mean that much but dude you're you're fighting jackie at point blank range you yeah. respect those two frames yeah because well because she has a three she has a she'll have a seven frame forward three yep that's crazy she'll be able to launch you again a seven frame mid which basically does 350 unbreakable damage yeah <laughs> i mean that's how this game is though i think i i do think that NRS might be leaning more to the pressure side, even even after they said that this game was going to be neutral based. Because I just look at some of the characters that have like Bionic Bounce and Katana's Fan Flutter, like Bro, the Break Neutral, Set Cetrion, Cetrion, the one, well, not the best zoner in the game, but like one of the top three zoners in the game, uh, has extremely good pressure, uh, with the tornado. So let's let's drag this tangent back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I was saying what I first liked about Cetran is I still think that spring cleaning is the most fun variation, by the way. The combos are more fun. The the it's extremely satisfying to jail into that geyser and if it hits, teleport and then do the optimal, which is one one, forward one three, geyser. Uh it's extremely satisfying to land that combo. I love it. It's pretty to look at, and it ends with you know a really awesome move which is the geyser it just it's aesthetically pleasing to me yeah so it's but, cool and 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 you get to do you know do some damage basically well not actually yes. do some but you but got then when i started um getting again getting people that would flawless block the rock wall and combo me i was like all right hold on hold on this isn't working the same so then um i didn't even really mess with born again that much but then once I started seeing some uh, some tournament players use this the variation of Cetrion that everyone's using now, uh, Teleport, Earthquake, and Tornado. Uh, you give up the Geyser, because uh, the inputs are the same as Tornado, back forward four. But what the Tornado gives you is um, any string on block can be cancelled into Tornado, um, which is has pushed back to jumping distance and is minus seven. You can mostly you can uh, press buttons against most of the cast in that situation. Nobody's gonna like, unless you get a maniac that you're playing against that like does a sub zero slide or something on minus seven. Uh, then you're you're basically it's it's resetting the neutral minus seven. What are they gonna do with that from jumping distance? Yeah, Nothing. yeah. Uh, the catch is that um, if you start your strings with a mid, then there's a flawless block gap in the tornado. But that is not really a huge problem because if you find yourself fighting a player who flawless blocks that, you can either end the string without doing tornado, or and then um, they'll be looking for the flawless block and won't take their turn back in time, um, or they won't punish you, I should say. Or you can actually uh, hit them if you do rock wall instead. If they're trying to flawless block tornado, if you do rock wall, it starts up in 12 frames and it hits them and then puts them right next to you, and you're you have 15 frames of advantage. <laughs> oh, okay. Like so, it's never going to be a consistent punish. So I don't consider it like a super huge weakness to the tornado move that they can flawless block the hit on it because you can cover it 
uh, and you have you can mind game it with the rock wall. Well, that's generally that, so that's kind of something I've noticed with MK11. That, that's generally how it goes. Is like as long as the benefits completely outweigh the risks, usually those moves are going to be used. Like you know, Luke Kang's forward four is a, the best example of this. Like clearly he has. There, you know, it's minus seven in certain areas. Y you can get the plus four, but the plus in the plus four even has a has a crushing blow, but it has a gap. But like the benefits are so high that Liu Kang is just a better character. Like even though there's clear counters, those clear counters aren't really that big of a deal because the benefits are just so high. And I think that's what it seems like with Cetrion. Like, you might be able to false block, you know, with the Tornado, but the Tornado is just so damn good, it doesn't even matter, you know? Oh, my God. It's a, There's just so much good It's benefits. a restand. Um, it's, it's free safety. Completely, completely uh, free safety and free resetting the neutral. So, like, and it doesn't have the, the weaknesses of Rockwall. Um... Yes, you can flawless block it, but you can't flawless block it after every string that Cetrion does. It, it depends on how she goes into Tornado. Like, if you do 1-1 one, one or 2-1 and do those two strings into Tornado, they can't flawless block it. Yeah. Um, seven frame jab moves can interrupt sometimes. Uh, so, like, if you see a Cetrion do forward 2-3 Tornado, uh, well, you're not going to see the Tornado. You're just going to guess. You're going to make a read Tornado. You can do like 1-1 one, one Fatal Blow. If that happens to be the situation, that's a lot of damage that she takes Unbreakable. But again, you can't do that if I do forward 2-3 Rock Wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, and once again, I will say uh, that when you have the Tornado, you you give up the Geyser, which I think is her second best move aside from the tornado yeah but she has in her universal kit she has a combo extender uh that restands by the way uh her tendril <laughs> pull uh the disadvantage is that it starts up in like 28 frames or something instead of 23 which is the case of the geyser so it's slower it doesn't combo from one of her best strings which is forward one three the the tendrils don't combo from that which that is a big bummer um and also oh, never mind um, the tendrils don't combo from that, which is a really good punish str punish string, I should say. It's what I mainly use to punish uh, things like Jade's forward 2-1 or uh, Raiden's storm cell. Uh, that's a main string that I would use. So you have to like change up your gameplay a little bit or just you know sacrifice the damage to get the guaranteed punish. Okay. Um, so okay. so uh, her 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 other combo extender is in her universal kit. She has it in every vari every variation, um, which is the tendril pool, which uh, if you land any string, except for the one that I mentioned before, you keep them standing if they are stood, or you restand them if you hit them out of the air, by the way. So wake up jump, if you land your, if you hit confirm, it doesn't matter that they jumped, your combo still works and stands them up and leaves you with that rock wall hit advantage. Yeah, which, which is, is insane. Yeah, that's 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 where such a, I think and being able to again, this is why is this is what is so good. I will say, again, I think spring cleaning is still more fun to play. The combos are more satisfying. I think that there's more fun things that you can do, but it's just not as strong as just the restood, the um the 200 damage Oh yeah, that's true. Two hundred damage, completely unbreakable. Um, leaves them standing with fifteen hit advantage. That's it's too much, dude. And Cetrion, one of the best zoning characters in the game, has pressure like that, right? You're yeah. gonna press buttons on minus fifteen. Well, if it's combat league, they might, but <laughs> you know, any any player who knows it knows anything will not. Uh, so all you have to do is enforce your mids just enough to get your uh, to get the person to respect it enough that you can get away with doing high attacks sometimes. And there's no flawless block gap in those high attacks. If they block, you just do torna Tornado, and it's completely safe. Yeah. Okay. That being said, I should say, also, in Spring Cleaning, you have access to that combo, too. It just doesn't do as much damage as the Geyser combos. Okay. Okay. 
Wow, yeah, Cetrion, she just seems really strong. I was actually going to ask you, so I have I have three more questions. Unfortunately, we're almost over time. We have about six minutes, but we're going to try to shoot through these as quickly as we can. Um, that's kind of my fault, too, for going on tangents. But um, So I was going to ask, what do you think about the neutral like what do you think like how does it does your you you would consider your player your character playing mk11 well right i mean pretty much she has everything you need she's got the zoning she's got it was strong zoning by the way she's got a teleport and then she also is able to reset the neutral it seems like most characters in this game the way that they shine is that they reset the neutral with a special move or in your case it's free it's free right you don't yep. have to spend a bar or anything. You know, Noob has to spend a bar. Melina has to spend a bar. But you don't have to do anything at all. So what would you... Is is that why you would say that Cetrion is top one? Cetrion is top one for that reason, but also, like, just the, the strength of her buttons, her strings. Um, almost all of them lead to a combo if you, if they hit. Well, what um, makes her better than Jackie, I guess? Like, that's kind of... Because saying top one, that's like a really bold statement. So I'm just kind of curious. Like, what would what would make you think she's, like, better than Jackie or Liu Kang? I guess. That's probably uh, All right, so... I, I don't know. I don't know if I would actually say that. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I was being uh, a little hyperbolic when I was saying Cetri on top one. Okay. Do, do I think she... That there's an argument to be made? Yes. Do I think that... Um, it's objective. I really don't. Well, I would, um, I would say, I mean, I would say there's a lot of other players making that same claim. So I don't know if it's necessarily just you, or maybe it's just kind of like a, a like everyone's just kind of accepted that, but they haven't really thought about it. Or if it's just like, I don't know what it could be, but I'm just saying that a lot of people are making the same claim that you are. That Cetri not Jackie, not Luke Kang, not Kotal Khan, but Cetrion is top one. So Cetrion. you're not well, the only the, one. The strength, the strength that Cetrion has that Jackie doesn't have is Cetrion can can be comfortable up close against Jackie. Um, it's not fun for Cetrion, right? Like it's it's always rough, but she can outspace uh, Jackie's normals, like. How many Jackies uh, will like confirm back two into a full combo? Like it's it's rare that I've seen that, right? Uh, she can go into the bounce or whatever, but like, can you uh, catch Jackie, her? Bounce? Jackie has mind games, but you can flawless block Jackie. You can low profile her moves and like cause her to basically have to spend two bars of offensive meter to like do a mind game against you, and it still might just get blocked. Um, does she still have really good pressure? Yes, but Cetrion can play that up close game with Jackie and compete, but Cetrion can keep Jackie at full screen um, as long as the reads are made. Okay, so you and can catch her bounce. that would make her a lot then. stronger. Okay, so you can, you can catch her bounce, basically. That's what you're saying. It's like, as she tries to bionic bounce in, you can catch her trying to oh, do it. I, most of the time when I play a Jackie, like... I'd say two out of three matches against the Jackie. Uh, well, two out of three sets, I should say. Um, so first to two sets, yeah. I will get that air bolt or crushing blow because Jackies want to jump in. It's Cetrion, dude. You want to get close to her. You don't want to play full screen against Cetrion when you are Jackie. Oh, and you can tell. Uh, so you're going to be jumping in. So like eventually, you're going to make the wrong guess, and my boulder will be in the air, and you're going to get 300 damage. Yeah, and you could teleport away too. Like I didn't. I just thought, kind of thought about that. You could technically teleport away to yeah, get out of her. Pressure. I mean, and Cetrion's down three is like Katana's down three in that it low profiles all those same moves. Oh, okay. Uh, so in that sense, I would say that like, yes, we all know that Jackie's insanely good, but Cetrion does have that advantage where she is comfortable everywhere, and Jackie is uncomfortable on more spots of the screen than Cetrion is. As far as Liu Kang. Liu Kang is a little more comfortable sitting at full screen because he will actually outzone you with his fireballs. Air fire. So that means this that means that the Cetrion player has to make a read. And it could be her tendril pull, which low profiles high projectiles, or it could be a, a timing on a teleport. Uh, but you 
as as messed up as it sounds, you probably want to be playing Liu Kang um, close up, and you're looking to try to make Liu Kang whiff. Whiff his forward four, and then Cetrion is like, has top tier whiff punishes. Are they the best in the game? Uh, it doesn't matter. They're good enough that that's how you can beat a Liu Kang. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's all you really need. You don't really need the best whiff punishing tool. You just need a tool that will whiff punish well. Yep. And it seems like, so you said you struggle with Luke Kang zoning. Would you say it's is, is uh, air fireball when he jumps in the air and he shoots you with a fireball? Is that the one? Or is it like, no, just, man, it's, he's uh, good it's, low, it's low fireball, no doubt. It's oh, low okay. fireball, no doubt. Okay. Like, because you, you, Cetrion's jump is a little bit weak in that she doesn't do a flip or anything, right? She, like, basically maintains a standing position. Yeah. So even his low fireball, when amplified, is hard to jump over for Cetrion. Um, if you're doing a forward jump, a neutral jump, you can usually get over it, uh, especially because you can keep yourself in the air with Hell's Wrath. But okay, the low fireball basically um, always being a threat. So Liu Kang is Liu Kang is comfortable to sit there and throw fireballs at you, and a lot of Liu Kangs since Ultimate are bringing the uh, the zoning buff, right? Dragons oh, gifts yeah. or dragons fire, whichever is the one that gives him the. Um, the damage buff on his projectiles, they bring that, they activate it, and then they just shoot fireballs. They're like, come at me, bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, and Oh, sorry. Continue. I will just I will just uh, compliment that by saying, like, Cetrion does have incredible projectiles, but they are all very slow. And that's why she can struggle with some zoning matchups. Uh, like especially, like, against un like non-conventional high projectiles, like uh, Liu Kang's low, low fireball. Katana's low fan, actually. Um and uh, Johnny's force balls. Okay, yeah, I will. I'll give you a little bit of a hint on Katana's low fan though. Look, Katana's low fan is actually not very plus on hit. Sometimes you can actually jump after you've been hit by it. Um, I was playing against Bax, and I think Bax knew that in the last tournament I played because I hit him with low fan, and every single time I hit him with low fan, he just jumped immediately because he knew. I think he knows. It's, it's just Molina has the same problem with her high, her high projector. They're not very plus. They're like plus eight on hit, so. It's very easy for your opponent to just jump over, and you actually have to back up every single time you hit them with a a, uh, a side toss. But I don't know if I, it's just me playing it wrong or whatever, but I've just noticed that they're just not plus enough to do much. They can contend. They help contend. They complement the high projectile. Like with Katana, her low fan complements her high projectile, and her if you have the Molina stance, they complement the side toss too. But where it's really at, like the plus frames, where it's really at is either the canceled uh, regular fan or the regular fan. I would say well, those are that, where you get That can be fine, frames. but as long as we're on about Cetrion, if I'm going to sit at full screen, even if I blocked it or if I get hit by it, it doesn't matter. Like, if I jump, I'm going to get clipped by a high fan because the hitbox is so good that Cetrion can't jump over it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Unless you have a perfectly timed jump. Um, but basically, most of the time, you can't count on jumping over Katana's regular fan toss. And then, if you throw another low fan, none of my projectiles start up fast enough to get you. Um, and so that's why one of the best zoners in the game actually struggles against some of the like the non-zoning characters, but just because their moves are faster. And then, um, again, they're not the high projectiles; their mids are lows. Uh, so I have to. You have to block them, or you have to make a, a jumping read or something. Yeah, that, I mean, that um, always makes me think that, like, because, again, like, people want to say, I mean, Cetrion is the best zoner in the game, but I'm just wondering if it's just a combination. Like, I always go back to, like, I think it's just, I think it's a combination. I think her being a good zoner is part of it, but I think the fact that her neutral game is strong, she's able to play keep away with the teleport. I just I feel like if there were certain tools taken away, she wouldn't be the best zoner in the game. You, you see what I'm saying? I don't think she's the best zoner in the game. Oh, okay. I think Shang Tsung is better. Okay. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, especially think... Shake now too, because he has Shake. Uh, well, just just Hell Sparks make him the best zoner, honestly. Oh, or ground works. ground eruption, it's Hell Sparks. <laughs> and uh, Ro Corpse Robocop also contends to be a to be a really good zoner. Uh, but Cetrion, her She's not really a full zoner. She's a hybrid character. As, dude, 
a full zoner doesn't have the the buttons and the frame data that Cetrion has. Yeah, she has an eight frame down one. That's if you consider that a weakness in that game, that's her weakness. Uh she has extremely low profiling down three and down four, uh, with lots of hit advantage. Uh she has an extremely awesome hitbox on her standing one, which is an eight frame button that you use that converts into a full combo. Um she has two reliable up close crushing blows in her two one three string and also the down two crushing blow. I consider that a reliable crushing blow for every character. So like um that lead to about four hundred damage between three fifty and four hundred damage a piece, by the way. With a restand. Yeah. Like if Cetrion's a zoner, then people shouldn't be afraid of her when they actually close the gap. But you have to be afraid of her when you close the gap. Yeah. And so yeah. she's a hybrid character. Yeah. I mean, that, I, I, I guess I read too many YouTube comments. I think that's what it's coming down to because I just I say the same thing you say all the time. Not not in as in the, as in depth as you because you play you know Cetrion. I don't play her, but just from what I've you know just kind of like I try to relate it to my character. That's generally how I, I'm able to kind of figure these things out. Like, when I feel like I go towards Garrus or Cetrion, I still feel scared. Like, that's how I that's how I kind of... But when I go towards someone like Robocop or Scarlet, I don't feel scared anymore. Because it's just like, they're not that good up close. Like, I know that whatever they have, I can deal with. I can corner them, and they're fucked. But it just seems like in this game, that's not necessarily the case. So yeah, Robo RoboCop has a 10 frame hit confirmable mid, but his combos aren't really that much. He's not getting more than 200 damage on anything that he does. Uh he's going to chip you away as you get in and then his buttons are kind of shitty up close. So you're going you're gonna most characters are going to win up close against RoboCop. Uh but yeah, against uh and and Scarlet too. Like Scarlet Scarlet has, I think, a better a better time up close than RoboCop was. Not that she does damage, but that her buttons are a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> like, if she gets a full punish on you, like, what's she gonna do? Like, she's gonna do one, two, four tentacle or something. For... Yeah, it's like two hundred damage or something. It's really low. Yeah, and it doesn't. doesn't it knocks damage, them away though. again. So yeah. like. It doesn't lead to, I mean, just floss block the next tentacle or floss block the blood ball and just take your turn back. It really isn't that hard. I mean, I've lost it. Don't get me wrong. I've lost to some Scarlet player. I'm not the best player in the world, so I've lost to some Scarlet players. But to me, it just never felt like I was losing to the character. It felt like I was losing to just the person being a better player. You know, it yeah. wasn't necessarily the character could do anything better than any other character. I mean, yeah, I, can, I was, I was if they played Garrus, that. like if they played someone like Garrus, like I would struggle with them 10 times over because they were playing a character that did what Scarlet did, but better, you know? So, yeah, I was going to say, if, if I'm playing as Scarlet, I want to keep most of the cast like pretty far away because her blood tentacle is a really good move. Um, but when I'm playing Cetrion, dude, it depends. Like, uh, there are certain characters that I want to keep away, uh, like Joker, because Joker has insane mix-ups and also extremely long-range buttons. Another character that I, I just thought of right now that I don't really like playing up close against with Cetrion is Cabal. I, find, I really struggle with Cabal. Um, up close. Yeah, up close, because his mids are incredible they all lead to combos he has mix-ups there's They're no gaps safe, and he's safe too. he's yeah. safe on everything unless unless he makes himself unsafe and that's yeah, a choice the that the cabal yeah. makes yeah the cabal player yeah i've never that's actually i'll probably talk about that in another um podcast or just kind of commentary but, about but that's, cabal because but yeah that's an that's just another Another reason why I think that Cetrion is super strong is because when I don't want to be close to somebody, I basically get to choose. Yeah, yeah. If if Cabal yeah. wants to get in on Cetrion, right, he has to make a read. He has to basically make a jumping read with his uh with that upgraded move that he got with the gas whatever his gas air his air gas move is. Oh, the the fart blast. <laughs> The fart, the fart blast, <laughs> or, um, or if he reads like a boulder into another boulder, he can squeeze a nomad dash in there and and get a combo. But that's a read, 
because it's if I do read. something else, you're getting hit by it. Yeah, it's a hard read. Yeah, Cabal gets zoned out pretty bad, I would say. I mean, even right. with it, even with his projectile, so it's, that's it's so the, plus, but it doesn't again. Really Cetri matter. Cetrion again has the strength that she gets to choose where she plays the game, and she's good. At, she's good everywhere. Yeah, that, I mean, that's and yeah, not that, not everybody gets to do that. Look at Baraka. Uh, <laughs> I think Kitana has a little bit that she can do that, but also like other characters, like Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn has a move for getting in, but it's not really that great. It gets hit by most projectiles. Um, Katana has a little bit of a choice, but uh, I guess one of the more extreme examples would be Spawn. Spawn has extremely long-range buttons, but if he's sitting at full screen for an entire game, he's probably losing. I'm wondering if that. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's another thing. Maybe it's the hybrid characters that are kind of higher up on the tier list. I'm wondering if that's mm. the case. I don't consider Jackie a hybrid character. She just oh. has rhythm well, yeah, mobility. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I guess Jaxie's kind of one of... But Jackie's her offense is so oppressive that maybe she's just able to... Because I remember in MKX, Hellfire Scorpion struggled in a lot of areas. His defense was bad. Like, you didn't have armored moves to get out of shit, right? Um, he just had, like, a, 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 a scissor kick that was it. Or his takedown that was armored. Yeah. But he his offense was so oppressive, it didn't even matter. Like, he, hmm. just, he just bullied you until... Like, he bullied you up close, and that was it. He didn't really have to deal... Like, he had to deal with everything else, but he was so so strong of a bully. So I'm wondering if, like, that's kind of how Jackie is. She's just... Like, because you've had this where you just... You hold the block button for a good 10 seconds because you just don't know where to take your turn back with Jackie. And I'm wondering if that's the case with Jackie where she's just... She's just able to bully you for so long that it doesn't really matter if she's a hybrid character or not. Because if you look at someone like Baraka, Baraka's not like that. Baraka, yeah, I he'll think, get his I think it's the mobility, but... dude. Honestly, it's the mobility. It's because she's so good up close, but she has the bionic bounce and she can get in so quickly, right? If basically, here's what I'm saying: is how many Jackies do you see in tournament or in combat league now that do not have bionic bounce equipped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would say I would definitely say that's another part of. I would definitely say that that's kind of what allows her to bully you because if Baraka had a bionic bounce, right, we might be saying the same thing about him, wouldn't we? Except for maybe the the fact that he had doesn't have a good mid. Uh, I would say yeah, beside that, Baraka can't have a good mid though because he gets like four hundred damage on a touch, man. Yeah, one, well, one bar. I'm just using Baraka, like I'm just saying, like in theory, right? Because we're talking about how Jackie is very strong up close, but she's not a hybrid character. So I was just saying more like, you know, if you look at someone like Baraka, right? And let's say we gave him a bionic bounce and we gave him a good mid, he wouldn't be a hybrid character, but he would still be very strong because. He just could get in your face, and you just have to deal with his nonsense. See what I'm saying? Yeah, like it's not I, necessarily. I think, yeah, I think uh, it. Yeah, if Baraka had the mobility, I think yeah, exactly that. Um, so, it to bring it to bring it back, it's uh, Jackie has all of those really good buttons, but it's the ability to get in uh, extremely quickly and whenever she wants uh, that really make her top tier. Who yeah. who else? Liu Kang. Liu Kang is comfortable at full screen yeah he's hybrid so he, he's I, he hybrid. yeah we'd call him a hybrid but he can also get in and he has an extremely fast advancing like three-quarter screen move that, yeah. can punish, <laughs> that can punish a lot of things right it's Wake not quite buttons, sub-zero dude. slide speed right but it is close yeah yeah it's really strong so actually um i only we only have a few minutes left just because we kind of went over the hour mark but i just wanted to ask one more question uh i i I think I got a lot of, about Cetrion, and thank you for that. That does a lot of good information on Cetrion, because there was a few things I didn't know myself. But I just kind of wanted to ask you, so clearly there's a tier list in this game. Um, we've been told so many times in MK11 that every character is balanced, the game is balanced, There, you know, there's characters that are better than others, but you can win with every, any character. Now... I agree with that, but for the longest time, now now that I'm getting more into the tourney scene and I'm getting more interested in the competitive aspect, I'm starting to see myself gravitate away from the characters I like playing and towards the characters that are more top tier. Now, I would ask you, though, the actually the opposite way. Was there any character that played similar that you ever found interest in and you just chose not to play them because Cetrion is just clearly better and does the same thing? 
Like, what care do you? Is there any character in the game that you consider that the, that to be the case? Uh, the perfect example of that is actually Scarlet. Uh, when I first started playing this game, and for like the first six seasons of Combat League, I played mostly Scarlet. Um, and Scarlet's easier to easier to pick up, especially in the lower tiers, because number one, she has uh, easy consistent damage, like easier easier keep away than Cetrion, and she has uh, better mids. But once you start playing against better players, the weaknesses of Scarlet are very apparent. And not only um, not only does Scarlet have the flawless block gaps and no good staggers, ostensibly, um, she actually straight up loses a full screen game against Spring Cleaning Cetrion. <laughs> Cetrion literally does every single thing in the game better than Scarlet does. With the exception of a very specific range, which is just outside of Cetrion's button range, and like up to about jumping distance. Scarlet has buttons that are more suited for that situation. But they're flawless but, walkable, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> but everywhere oh, else man. on the screen, with the exception of that relative distance, uh, Cetrion wins in every matchup. Uh, Scarlet has the Blood Tentacle. Uh, Cetrion has the Geyser, which starts up in about the same amount of time, also hits mid, and can lead to a full combo. Yeah, that's some, yeah, that's crazy. Cetrion I... has a Cetrion has a boulder that's plus twenty, almost plus thirty on block at full screen. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's I mean it's clear. So yeah, that is that is the quintessential example of the question that you just asked. Is yes, I used to play a lot of Scarlet. I still like Scarlet's design, by the way. She Same keeps um, blood in vials on her hip and pulls it out and makes like a scythe and a dagger and a scimitar. That's so cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's why I like I, Scarlet's probably the only lore character I actually. I, I like the fact that you know she was an orphan and she was given blood magic. That all oh, that and, stuff is badass. It makes her. And really she can cool. uh, if she if she hit confirms anything, she can heal herself for seventy damage, which is a lot. Like that's a big deal. But her weaknesses just scream way way too loud. And well, well, like, what would you think could, they could fix? I mean, let's let's kind of end the podcast with this. What 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 would you think? Or the interview. What would you make think that uh, would make Scarlet like actually a threat? Because she's got the teleport, she's got the blood ball, the the blood ball mix ups. You know, she unfortunately she ha she has flawless block gaps, so you have to kind of play a mind game with that. Like, what would you say would make Scarlet like a solid character? Because well, right I mean, now she has she has long reaching thirteen frame mids too. Like. Scorpion's mid, his forward three is thirteen frames. It's the same thing. And how how afraid of you are? How afraid are you of Scorpion's forward three versus Scarlet's forward four? Right? It's way worse because yeah. because Scorpion's forward three is minus two on block, and Scarlet's is minus eight. Okay. Like, uh, that and there's. I honestly think that to to make Scarlet better, I. Frame data. I think you have to reconsider where her flawless block gaps are. Okay. If you if you want to leave the forward four three one in, sure that string is really strong, uh, and there's a mind game behind it too. You can cancel it into like different moves. But okay. like, does does one two four really need a flawless block gap? What's the point? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say I mean just kind of because I play Scarlet myself a little bit. I would say make the forward too safe. I would say make it like minus. 10 or something like that something that's like really hard or maybe even make it minus 11 so at least sub zero could punish it but i would say i would say that would be a good start just make the forward two by itself safe because what is it now uh it's like minus 12 or something like that is it uh. minus 12 it might be higher than that i just know it's punishable it's punishable by itself if you read forward two by itself you can punish it with certain advancing yeah. i i mean i understand strength. that it's a that it's a good like it's a good button by itself like aside from the fact that it, like it's really minus on block but like does it need to be that minus like what does it lead to you can you can do a blood tentacle yeah, which they can it. flawless block you can do a projectile <laughs> which they can duck um or you can do forward 2 1 which i don't know why anybody would do that because that's just asking to be killed yeah it's it doesn't lead to anything like if it was a hit confirmable like if you could do forward 2 1 special 
then maybe I see that it, it's risky to throw out there, but you don't get anything off of it. So well, why is it so unsafe? I think, I think NRS is just afraid of moves like that. I mean, because it anti airs too. I think they're just, I mean, that's just kind of what I understand from what I've seen so far. I mean, I don't know. Scarlett doesn't know have anything, doing, dude. But... She doesn't have anything. Oh, trust like, me. Give I get her it. one thing. <laughs> give her one thing. Every character in this game has one thing that they're good at. Yeah. Like, Shao Kahn has a lot of weaknesses, but you know what he has? 350 damage <laughs> on one bar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get right? it. I mean, and it's, it's yeah, I totally understand. It's It frustrated me a bit. That's why I dropped. That was the first character I dropped, because it didn't take me long to realize that Scarlet... I mean, you can make her work. Don't get me wrong. Like, I totally get... Like, the meta is completely determined by... It's determined by the characters, but it's also de like you can play take Scarlet and win her in a turn. It's not like MK9 and MKX where there were just clear there was no way like it was nine one right. Like in this game, you might have a seven three matchup, but it's not hor like it's not to the fact where you can't win. Like you there can are still seven, yeah there are seven reads. three matchups, and then you can you can cover it with like honestly with uh, customs. I think you can like cover a lot of that stuff, but. So just like really quickly, because like now I'm like super, I'm super irritated by the fact that Scarlet's forward two can't be a thing. Like every character in this game basically has BS, right? There's something yeah. that's really annoying about them, right? Yeah. Like we've all fought a scorpion that just jumps and looks for you to press a button so they can combo you. Yeah. Um, uh, Devora. Devora, I don't think is a really strong character, but it's never it's never fun to fight Devora if she gets you with a jump one from like three quarters screen yeah you're gonna get comboed and like that's a bs thing that devora has every character has like one thing at least about them that's super annoying give scarlet something that's what makes the characters good and that's what makes people want to play them is find out what their strength is and then like incorporate that Abuse into your it, game as much basically. as you can yeah, but like yeah. scarlet doesn't have anything man forward two like i said it doesn't I understand making it really unsafe if it if it if you could get something off of it, but you literally you can't get anything off of it. Yeah, it's just you. It's all the risk is on you, and that's what it really comes down to. Like if you look at it's, the top tier characters, the risk is. It's not kind of on like them. her back her back too as well. You would think like the overhead is pretty good, but it's like twenty five or something on startup. It's really slow. Uh, it doesn't combo into anything, and the crushing blow on it is good for a mind game while you still have the crushing while. You still have it uh, unused, right? Yeah. But it's death on block. It's only plus a couple on hit. And, like, the crushing blow doesn't even do that much damage. Well, it's you like, can what, punish it with a dash up, too. Well, I feel, I feel like it was either Scarlet was really good and then NRS nerfed her hard because of the, you know, she was in the stress test, right? Or it's, she was one of the first characters they touched on and they just played it really safe with her. Like, it's one of those two things. Because you look like, I think, Blood, or not Blood Drive, uh, what is it called? The Cell Siphon was really plus, and then they made it plus four. So I'm wondering if, like, when they they started the balancing, they started it first on her, you know? That's what it kind of seems like. It seems like, and she just kind of got the short end of the stick, and now it's been like that, you know, a year and a half later, basically. Well, that's so. a bummer. And now that the Pro Comp is starting, I'm like really curious as to like well actually i'm really pessimistic about uh any incoming balance patches yeah yeah me too unfortunately well we're actually out of time but that was a lot of good information um i did have one more question i want to ask you but uh we'll maybe we'll talk about it some other time it's just kind of about the customs and what you think about the customs on such around but um, I think you covered a lot just with kind of the different variations, but thank you a lot, Spoonman. That that was a lot of good info, and I had to learn a lot about Cetrion and a lot about what you think about the meta, because I'm just saying right now, the meta has been very interesting to say the least. The fact that Jackie wasn't touched at all is still really surprising to me. Uh, NRS is definitely going a different route than they've ever gone. Any, I don't know if you've played any other, other NRS uh Mortal Kombat titles, but it's just completely different. Like we've, they've completely changed how they do balancing, how they've done the variation system, all that stuff. So, but thank you, um, thank you for 
getting to talk to me about this because that was a lot of good info. So, nah, yeah, man, it was fun. And uh, I just I suggest you pick up that busted variation of Cetrion with those three tournament moves and um, start playing some matches with her and see if you accidentally have some fun. Yeah, I mean, I've tried her once, but it was just simply I couldn't get the combos down. So I'm definitely going to try her out because I've heard a lot. Like, people keep telling me. I've had Nexus tell me the same thing. He's like, dude, it seems like you want to do what Cetrion does. Why don't you just pick up Cetrion? I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so I might have to look into that. That sounds like something. I'll just give her, try Give her see. some time because you have to play her differently because she doesn't, she doesn't really have, like, the mids. Uh, but she has extremely good spacing tools long range buttons um and you know a free reset of neutral as well as a completely standing combo so uh don't be turned off at your first sight just uh just give her some time and actually take her into matches too don't just spend all your time in the lab okay okay yeah i know i've been known for that so but yeah let me go ahead and end the podcast here uh thank you everyone who happens to listen to this and Again, as usual, I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and, well, occasionally Thursdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time, yeah, EST. So feel free to check me out there at twitch.tv, Op Soldier. But anyway, I'll see you guys later.